Hello, today we're going to be talking about how to deploy SQL updates in SCCM. Uh, I like to make this deployment available to the DBAs that are having to upgrade their SQL environment. And because there's a certain process they have to follow to shut down the application and do the little process, or if it has a cluster, there's a certain process you have to go through in order before you actually upgrade. So here I'm going to show you how to make those updates available to, to install the SQL updates. So today we're going to do... Um, SQL 2012 to Service Pack 4, the late uh, 2012. And you can use the same process for any SQL update. Um, so with that, let's get started. So what I have here is I have my one server that, um, that has SQL installed 2012 and I've run this query. And if you go to my website, my website will have, if you go to the website, you'll see SQL versions. And you'll see like a version table that has all the different versions and a service pack that has installed for all the different versions of SQL for SQL. And so when you look at my query, I have service pack 1 2012, 2012 service pack 1, so it's 11.03,000. So when I look at that, it tells me that I have 2012 with service pack 1, so I need to upgrade it to service pack 4. Sometimes now... Um, Oh, I gotta log in. Now, sometimes you'll see it right here, 11.3 thousand. It'll tell you right there, or if you go to properties, um, it'll tell you that. But sometimes it won't tell you the service pack that you have installed. So you kind of have to know that this is service pack one. Um, so I like running this query because it'll tell me what what um, and what edition it has. It's um, you know standard edition 64 bit service pack one so it gives me a little bit more information just by running a simple query and the query is also located on my website so if you go to my website which is at mynextsec.com i'll put the link in the comment section below uh, there's this query right here you run this query right here and that will tell you what version of sql you're running and then you can kind of go from there as to which what version you need to upgrade to and I like that SQL uh, table because it gives you all of the SQL versions that you have all the way up to 2016. So it'll tell you all that good stuff. So anyway, go check it out. Um, and so in this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy um, SQL 2012 Service Pack 4 to this server that only has Service Pack 1 installed. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I'm not going to save that query. So I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to bring in SCCM. Now, in the last video, I imported the SQL 2012 Service Pack 4 on the environment. This is the one I manually added in that last video. So if you want to go check that out, I'll link that video in the description too. Now, that video was to show you how to manually upgrade SQL to Service Pack 4. But here, I'm going to deploy it using SCCM. So with that, I'm going to highlight the... Um, and you can see there's two devices that need this version, this service pack. I'm just going to upgrade the um, SQL for right now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a, um, a SUG, a software update group. So I'm going to right click on this and go create software group. I'm going to call it SQL 2012 service pack 4 update. Or actually, I'll just say SQL 20 because that's what it is. And I'm just going to create. Now it's going to create a group with that um, patch included. Now if I go into groups, software update groups, and you'll see my group right there, uh, right here actually. Now I'm going to go ahead and download this update. So you right click and you click download. So I'm going to create a whole package for this, a separate package. So I'm going to create a new package. And I'm going to call it SQL 2012 Service Pack 4. And then I'm going to put it on my, let's see, where do I want to put this? I want it on my E drive. And let's see, I think I have it under updates. Yeah, so I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to go server. I'm going to create a folder called SQL 2012. SP4. Now I've got the folder already created. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Put this here. Now what I'm going to do is take the E drive out because it has to be UNC path. 
There we go. I usually like to enable binary differential for uh, replication. And I'm going to add distribution point. Next, we'll do a medium. That's fine. Actually, yeah, okay, that's fine. It's going to do a manual. All right, that's. Next, I don't have to worry about it now. It'll go ahead and download that patch to that, that patch to that folder, and this does take a few minutes depending on how big the file is. So it could take anywhere from 10, 15 minutes, or longer depending on how big the file is and how um, your network is. So we're going to let this go. Okay, this only took about five minutes. Again, it's just one patch, and there you go. There's the um, packages. And files. All right, so now that we have that there, now we can deploy this. Uh, now that it's been downloaded, uh, you can see we do a refresh. Okay, sometimes you have to click out. Okay, as you can see, we have this um, software update group. It's not deployed yet, but it's now downloaded. So now we can deploy this package and we uh, let's go ahead and make sure it's on the DP. Let's go content status. Make sure it's all there before we do the deployment. And do SQL. And there it is. It's green. It's already success. Okay. So now we want to do is create a collection. I'm going to do patch management. Servers. I'm going to create a new uh, collection. And I'm going to go use this, and then we're going to go ahead and pick, um, and we'll just go ahead and do next, we'll add. Now, sometimes I like to do it this way just to create the collection and I'll add the um, server that needs this update in here. All right. So, I want to go to devices. This is a server I'm going to upgrade to Service Pack 4. You right click on it. Add to selected item to existing device collection because I just created it. I'm go to servers and then we're going to put it there. Because that's the machine that's going to get the um, Service Pack 4 upgrade. So I'm going to wait for that to. Um... Now, if you want to schedule a maintenance window as to when this update will be available, you can do that at this point. Uh, so I'm going to right click on this uh, collection, go to properties. You go to maintenance window tab, you, you uh, click, click, click on that. And let's just do Sunday. Uh, it'll be today. Let's see. It's, um, let's do 11. Let's do the 2 p.m. Just to give it some time. Not that we need that much time. Now I'm going to call this software updates. None. And that way it's just going to be a one-time deployment. And there you go. And so, again, it's already 11 o'clock my time at the Pacific Standard Time. So now we're ready to go ahead and deploy that update to that server. So we're going to go to the package. Um, okay, now we're going to click on Deploy. I like to go ahead and just do that. Copy this over here rather than that date. Um, you can probably put a dash and do like um, October or something like that, 2019, or whatever you want to put, whatever you want to call that deployment. Um, you could call it whatever you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and 
click on that collection. So notice the collection is going to be targeted. And then I'm not going to do required, so I'm going to make it available. That way it's there in the software center for them to go ahead and install. So I'm going to make it available. And I'm going to do it as soon as possible, which is fine. Now you can schedule it if you want to. But because I'm making it available, there's, you don't need to schedule the, um, so if I go back, see how it's grayed out? It's because it's available, so it's not really a time frame. But if I were to click on required, then I can then select what time I want the deadline to occur. So because I picked available, that's not an option. So just click on okay. Now you can either do only uh, show computer restart, which is a more common option, or you can show everything if you want to, you know, show everything, but you know, uh, I think for, for now I'll just show all notifications so that way I know when it's available. Um, and then you also want to you also want to do an appointment evaluation after so it knows when something's completed. So you want to click on that. Let me make sure I got the other oh, items. Yeah. Okay, so you want to click on that. If you don't have an operations manager. And that's it. And that's it. So we created, that's our deployment. So now we go over to the server. I'm going to do a machine policy. And here's the server over here. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and go in the control panel. Machine policy, run now. And then we're going to do a software update, deployment evaluation. I usually give it about 10 seconds or so, and then I'll run that so it gives time to grab the policy and click on Run Now. And then just wait a few minutes, and we'll, um, you should see something pop up on the screen that says, because I said Show All Notice Notification. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up the Software Center. Oh, there it is. Now it does take a few minutes to show up here. And as you can see, New software is available, click to view. You can click on that or you can click on this. It'll show up in the software update. And as you can see, there's my patch and it says it's available. So at this point, I can install this anytime I want to. I can do it anytime I want. I have a maintenance window that's gonna go till 2 p.m. So I've got several hours to go ahead and do whatever I need to do prior to installing it. Since I don't really have any applications on this machine to do any pre-procedure before installing this patch. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and install this. Um, and it should uh, upgrade. Um, so when I click on it, and there's the uh, patch, I'm gonna go ahead and click on install. And then that starts to download the patch and then it'll start downloading. So when you click on installation status, it'll tell you right now that it's in the process of downloading um, this patch and then it'll start installing. And this patch does require a reboot. So you'll have to let um, folks know if this is tied to an application that it's gonna be down for a while while well, it's upgrading, so now it's doing, it's waiting for the install. And at some point I'll start the installation. And when it's done, you'll see that it's requiring a restart. And you can see the restart button, it was installing. So once that happens, you can either, whoop, I gotta log back in. As you can see, you can click on this and restart now, or you can uh, click on the little green thing and right click here and go restart now, whichever you wanna do. I'm gonna go click on there, there you go. And I'll go ahead and restart. And that's gonna restart my server. So now the server has been restarted, so let's double check our SQL Server. Go ahead and click on this. And let's see if it's been upgraded to Service Pack 4. As you see, the number is different. There you go. There's a version right there. You can see the versions there. Let's go ahead and do a new query and plug that um, query in there from the website, from my website. 
And as you can see, I now have 2012 Service Pack 4 installed. So there you have it. You can install, you can upgrade your SQL data, uh, databases using SCTM. And um, again, if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below. Um, and uh, with the... Um, Oop, I wanted to show you what it looks like on the SCTM side here real quick so you can see that. Now once it does another deployment evaluation, then we'll only have one required. So you know we have three compliant, two still required. Eventually it'll come back and when it does a deployment evaluation, it'll this will be compliant. So if you want to check the deployment status, you go to monitoring section, you go to deployments, you click on SQL. And there's my SQL. Right now it says it's not, you know, so first thing I usually like to do is run a summarization because it hasn't, doesn't have a time yet. Do a refresh, refresh, refresh. So we get a little timestamp here. And now it says it's in progress. Now it's saying non-compliant because it just hasn't done a deployment evaluation. Once it does, it will move from here to compliant uh, with this patch. So, and that's all you have, that's, and that's basically it in a nutshell. So this, Saved me time from having to go through the manual process of clicking through the manual uh, next, next, whatever uh, components through the manual installation. In some cases, you may have to do the manual. But here's a nice way to kind of make something available and a SQL patch available to a DBA or a server engineer that needs to upgrade um, some SQL uh, machines or servers. Um, you can also make it required, um, you know, if you wanted to just push it, make it required, it'll do it automatically on its own. If it's just a straight up uh, SQL upgrade and there's no other uh, prerequisites you have to do prior to doing that. Um, so, again, I just wanted to show you how you can do that through SCCM. And again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe. There's going to be a lot more content coming your way. I'm still going to do the MBAM series that's coming. And so stay tuned for that. I'm also going to be doing Mac management as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, again, if you have questions, comments, let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.